Hi, I'm Renata Bernardi, and this is the Job Hunting Podcast, where I interview experts and professionals and discuss issues that are important for job hunters and those who are working to advance their careers. So make sure that you subscribe and follow, and let's dive right in. Hello, and welcome to the Job Hunting Podcast. I'm Renata Bernardi. I'm your host. I'm based here in Melbourne, Australia, and we are in our second week of six weeks of stage four lockdown. So if you're watching this podcast episode on YouTube, you can see I am wearing my favorite jumper from Dangerous Females. If you want one, I will have a link below. It's a great not-for-profit supporting women. So um, I can't be bothered putting makeup on anymore or uh, wearing fancy clothes to be home. We are not allowed to go outside for anything except supermarket and grocery shopping. We are only allowed one hour a day for exercising and we are not allowed to go um, above and beyond five kilometers from our house with a few exceptions and there's a curfew between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning. What else? Well, you know what? And it's so cold outside anyway. We are in August in Melbourne. It's usually very cold, windy, wet. And <laughs> even that one hour of exercise, sometimes I do skip it because I'm in the Bayside area. And when it's cold and windy here, we have this uh, south wind from basically Antarctica coming through and I don't want to be out walking when it's that cold. So it's pretty miserable in Australia, Melbourne at the moment. Everywhere else in Australia is fine. Uh, They have managed COVID really well in other states and we are doing our best here in Victoria to manage the situation here because there has been several outbreaks and it's not under control yet. So four more weeks to go. It's a countdown mode. Every day is really um, a challenge to keep yourself motivated and energized. And, uh, you know, my best way of doing it personally is to keep my routine and keep working the regular hours that I work, which is usually about 10 hours a day. That's how many hours I work and keeping my weekends completely free. It's very hard because every day is exactly like the other. It's very hard to differentiate between Saturday, Sunday, Monday. They all look and feel the same. But in my routine, I keep them separate. Um, And that's how I'm managing my lockdown stage for our situation. Today will be a very different podcast. We are not interviewing anybody and I'm not going to be doing any coaching as well because it's a very special week for the Job Hunting Podcast and that's what I'm here to talk to you about. We are going to be um, doing interviews live for um, the Job Hunting Podcast during the Digital Innovation Festival here in Victoria. And I'm going to tell you all about it now. The Digital Innovation Festival happens every year in Victoria and usually there are hundreds of events happening all around the state, not just in Melbourne, but in uh, country uh, towns as well. And it's a fantastic opportunity for people to come together and talk about innovation, creativity, startups, um, emerging technologies, jobs of the future. It's an exciting couple of weeks every year. It's an initiative by the Department of Jobs precincts and regions and this year because of the lockdown it's completely digital for the first time (laughs) and it's it's a great way for us to keep productive keep in touch with each other and it's being really wonderful for me to put these four episodes together which will be recorded live for the first time uh we are a fairly new podcast we started in october last year 2019 we're now um in august so less than a year old but it's going really well we're listened um in over 50 countries we have a great following of job hunters and career enthusiasts people that are in the corporate sector not-for-profit in public sector 
and who are interested in understanding um, how they can better plan for their careers and progress in their jobs and, and professions in the future. So I have blended these two concepts of job hunting, career planning and digital innovation when I selected these four guests that I'll be interviewing. And the idea is that you can register and attend these live events in the next couple of weeks and participate, um, you know, listen and be there live. I think it's always more exciting when you're attending live. I think um, the concepts and ideas, they sink in better, but it also gives you an opportunity to hopefully ask a question if you have one for the guest and have that question answered. Um, and th that will be exciting for me as well to share the hosting uh, with my followers. And I'm very excited. If um, you are anywhere around the world, it gives you an opportunity to be involved in something that is organized here in the state of Victoria in Australia. And if you are new to uh, the podcast because you found us via the Digital Innovation Forum, sorry, festival, uh, and if you are new to this podcast because you found us via the Digital Innovation Festival, then welcome. Um, I'm glad you're here and now you can be part of our community as well. So if you are um, listening for the first time, if you have been listening but you forgot to do this, don't forget to follow us, uh, like us, subscribe. We are available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, on the Podbean platform where we host this podcast. The Podbean app is actually quite good. Podbean hosts, you know, Joe Hogan, the Mamma Mia podcasts, uh, which I, you know, usually love listening to when I'm just relaxing. And um, Stuff You Should Know is a great podcast as well that I have recommended in the past. There's a whole bunch of podcasts on Podbean, so that's a great um, app to download. I will soon be on Amazon. We've been invited to uh, register for uh, Amazon Audible podcast, so that's coming up soon as well. So wherever you're listening or if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And most importantly, remember to join my community and sign up for my newsletter. The newsletter comes up every week and I will send you the new episode of the Job Hunting Podcast with the blog, my thoughts and ideas for that week, which gives you a little bit of market intelligence of what's going on in the job market. And I curate uh, interesting articles for job hunters and career enthusiasts. So the best articles that I can find that are related to the topic of the day or the topic of the podcast. And I think um, it's a great one for professionals to sign up for. If I may say so myself, I really enjoy writing that newsletter and the um, uh, number of people following is growing every week. So I'm excited to see how it's um, being um, helping others. So you might find that useful. You can subscribe and, you know, see if you enjoy it. And of course, you can always unsubscribe if you you know, don't like it, but I hope that you stick around because we put a lot of effort in delivering great content for executives and professionals in the corporate sector, as I said before. Okay, so who is coming to these live events? And let's talk about the guests and you can consider registering for the events. The registration link will be, the, be in the episode show notes. So if you go to the episode show notes, you will find the registration link really easily or you can go to my website renatabenati.com and there will be a banner there. You can click and register. The first guest I will be interviewing on Tuesday the 25th of August is Alex Nomidis. He's the co-founder of Mindset Health and you if you've been listening to this podcast you've heard of it before because I have recommended Mindset Health app a couple of times. The first time was end of last year as one of the great investments that you can do if you're job hunting in between jobs or struggling with anxiety low-level depression, as Michelle Obama put it um, a couple of weeks ago in her podcast, and everybody picked up on that term. Um, you know, trouble sleeping, which is the reason why I use the Mindset app. It's really an interesting app. It's my favorite, and I have all of them <laughs> on my phone. I like testing them all out, and the Mindset app is my favorite. So I'm so excited to be interviewing Alex. And my second guest is Susan Colantuono. 
Susan Colantono is based in the US. She has a very famous TED Talk, which I have recommended to many of my clients when they start with me so that they listen to. I have uh, referenced her before when I interviewed Michelle Redfern for my podcast a couple of weeks ago. I will put all those links in the episode show notes. So if you're interested in listening to the TED Talk or listening to uh, my interview with Michelle Redfern, it will all be in the episode show notes. So Michelle Redfern and Susan Colantono are business partners. And when that podcast with Michelle was released, Susan contacted me to say, oh, you know, I really uh, enjoyed the podcast. And then I invited her to be my guest as well. And that's really great. I'm reading her book, getting ready for the podcast. Her book is No Ceiling, No Walls. And um, Michelle mentioned this book in that episode and said, this is a great book. And um, that's the title of the episode that we're filming next week on Wednesday, the 26th of August, 8.30 a.m., and that's Melbourne time and she's based on the east coast of America so New York time is 25th August 6 30 p.m. so when you go to the registration page I am hoping that the registration page will come up with the time that's suitable to you wherever you are in the world um, and you know I'll be very excited to talk to Susan about leadership which is her area of expertise gender dynamics during post-covid you know today is Friday the 21st of August here in Australia and the news of the day is that there has never been more unemployment for women in Australia ever <laughs> so it's really sad and disheartening and it has to do with the jobs that have have uh, been lost and uh, the casual nature of some of the opportunities that women take up and I will be very interesting to discuss some of these issues with Susan but also leadership in general as well and the behaviors traits skills and capabilities that leaders post-covid will have to help have and that's kind of a, a thread that started this week um uh, with the episode with Nick Georges, the CEO of Coco Black. So um, I hope you have enjoyed that episode with Nick, which was so great to um, interview him. Then my next guest is uh, Dr. Catherine Ball. Catherine is a wonderful, wonderful speaker and I am really am so excited to have her on the podcast. I've known her for a few years now. She's the first person that introduced me to drones. And I will never forget that, you know, the idea that drones will be everywhere. <laughs> so it's been a while, that, like I said, that I've known her. And she and I will be talking about emerging technologies and the jobs that come from emerging technologies like drones and other amazing opportunities that that can come up from us embracing innovation, technology, developing better research and um, coming up with different jobs that we haven't thought about, like pilots to pilot drones. <laughs> and I want to discuss with her those opportunities and think about how um, a crisis in the future, like if we have a pandemic 50 years from now, what would be different then and what sort of jobs uh, would be available um, in even 10 years from now, five years from now, that we could be moving towards an upskilling or reskilling to adopt and adapt as professionals. I'm interested in her take as a STEM expert that she is, but also um, also understanding if you're not a STEM person, what can you contribute uh, to STEM and innovation in jobs of the future? And finally, uh, the week after, on the 3rd of September at 12 p.m. Melbourne time, I'm interviewing Julian Doherty. Now, Julian is the managing director of Yellow Folder. Yellow Folder is a market research firm specialized in the job market. So they service the top 100 firms in Australia, corporations in Australia. And he um, uh, prepares for his clients, uh, you know, reports and, and identifies talent, capabilities and skills to prepare those companies for um, designing a workforce for the future and finding, you know, great talent out there and identifying what sort of skills and capabilities specific jobs will require. So, of course, he has amazing intel and he shares that with employers and he'll be sharing that with now you, job hunters and executives and professionals. And I 
really, really appreciate him giving us some time and sharing with us uh, these intelligence that normally we wouldn't get. So that's a great one coming up the week after. And I was interviewed on Ticker TV this week on Wednesday um, by the morning show host Alana McLean and Ben Norris to talk about the Digital Innovation Festival and their four guests. So I'm going to now share with you that video of that interview. I always enjoy going to Ticker TV. Ticker TV is a startup news channel here in Melbourne. The day I was interviewed, they turned one year. So it was a great birthday um, day for them. And I was, um, you know, excited to be involved and invited to come in on the birthday um, celebrations and talk about the Digital Innovation Festival and the four um, interviews that we have prepared to be involved in that event. So I'll share with you that video now. And like I said, you know, keep in touch, participate if you can in one of these four events. But if you're not available, if you're on the other side of the world and the times don't suit you, don't worry, because of course we are going to edit those episodes and share them with you here, wherever you found us. They will be available to you as um, normal podcast episodes in the near future. So now... Don't forget to subscribe, join our newsletter and community, and I hope to see you next time. Bye. Well, the Job Hunting Podcast is what it says on the tin, a podcast for job hunters and career enthusiasts. The podcast is part of the lineup for the Victorian Digital Innovation Forum happening next week, August 24 through to September 4. And here to tell us more is Renata Bernard from the Job Hunting Podcast, Friend of the show, good morning to you. Hello. Happy hey. birthday, everyone. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Renata. We'll blow out the candles with <laughs> champagne. Well, yes, we're, very, have a bubble. we're very lucky, uh, obviously, to be in, in media, I guess, where we have seen so many cuts, particularly over the last 12 months and, and you know, more recently over the last probably eight weeks. When we're talking about jobs, though, what about the jobs of the future? Where are you actually seeing the growth? Well, I'm as curious as you are, and that's the great thing about having the podcast is that I can interview people and ask them questions. So for this um, event that's happening under the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions, I've been asked to have four live events where I'm interviewing people for the podcast and people can join me and ask questions as well. One of these individuals that I'm interviewing is in the managing director of a market intelligence firm called um, Yellow Folder, and he's a noble. Julian Doherty, and that's exactly what he's looking into at the moment. He's looking post COVID, what are the top 100 firms in Australia looking for? What are the capabilities and the sort of talent that they are looking for? And I'm as curious as you are, Alana, so I can't wait to interview him next week. Well, look, we're hearing a lot about these discussions and the importance of digital, especially in these unprecedented times with COVID 19. But, you know, this is a big question, you know, is yeah. digital the only thing about our future? Is there, is there more that we should be looking at? Look, no question that uh, jobs in the digital world and all of the jobs that have to do with emerging technologies are big and we really don't understand what they are. So I'm interviewing my friend, Dr. Catherine Ball, and she is a drone expert. I remember Catherine telling me years ago how important drones were going to be. Imagine if we already had drones delivering yeah. medication to us. You know, we're, we're all in lockdown here in Melbourne. So it would be great if we could hear from her how she envisioned this world where emerging technologies are actually creating jobs that we don't even know, like pilots for drones and things like that. I know that they are there, but I think that we need to know more about this opportunity so that we can get ready for them three, four years from now, right? Mm, oh, absolutely. So, Renata, what are the trends, I guess, then, that we that, that sort of seem to be uh, crystallising, I guess, as we move into this new era of work? What are the trends? Well, I, I see a lot of jobs being created like your jobs, you know, in this virtual yeah. world, in this sort of social uh, media environment, um, apps, you know, are great. I'm interviewing Alex um, Namodis, who is the co-founder of Mindset app, you know, um, it's a well-being app and it's my favorite app. I love it so much. It puts me to sleep almost every night. So. <laughs> 
those things that um, we need to have um, the creativity and the innovation to um, come up with, but also professionals in the white collar work, which are the professionals that I usually cater for, having the adaptability and the personal agility to be, be dynamic. Usually if you are in the white collar environment, you're set in stone in a, some sort of procedure and protocol within a brick, bricks and mortar um, organization. You have to kind of open up your horizons now to be more dynamic and operate in different environments. You know, moving forward, do you think that employers have to now accept flexible work conditions? You know, I think that's what we're now looking at moving into the future. Do you think that that's reasonable for people to be accepting that that is the way of the future? Oh, absolutely. I cannot wait for more flexibility. And I think we can we have shown now to employers that we can be productive, efficient, working from home. So basically, we can go anywhere. There's a futurist in New York, Tom Goodman. And in March, he wrote, um, no way people are going to move away from New York because of a pandemic. And yeah. now he posted that same tweet and yeah. said, I just bought a, a um, a, a land in Georgia, bye bye New York. So he mm. he left New York. So I'm saying I'm seeing people really uh, have this interest in working remotely. But I also think that we have open plan leaving people. Stop with the ironing boards. Who is ironing in the middle of a pandemic? Every time I zoom someone, there's an ironing board at the background. <laughs> and I'm telling you, as if you need to iron those tracksuit pants, you just pop those you babies don't. on, leave them there till Friday. <laughs> <laughs> ironing board away and show that you're ready to work remotely and have a professional environment at home. Yeah, so, Renata, I, I guess true. like this is a, a sort of crossroads for a lot of people in terms of feeling a bit worried about their job security or perhaps have already lost their job. So if people are looking to brush up on some skills or potentially upskill in a new area. What are some of those key things that employers, you know, into the future will be looking for, do you think? Look, the more important thing for somebody who last, lost their job to look into uh, brushing up their skills is to crystallize the experience that they have gained. Sometimes people have been in an organization for five, 10 years, and they're great at project management, but they don't have the certification to um, uh, crystallize that experience. Right. So I say, go back and crystallize that. So you have the experience plus the professional development. I love it when I get a client like I did this week where she has stayed in an organization for a long time, but she throughout her time, she get, got all of the certifications, all of the professional development. That's the best thing. But if you haven't done that, now is the time. Well, I love a podcast and I think I'm going to love yours. How can people find the podcast if they want to listen to it? Spotify, iTunes. I have listeners in 50 countries. It's crazy. I have, you know, a, a great audience. But you can go to my website. It's renatabernardi.com. Or you can go to diff.vic.org. You know, whatever those. <laughs> diff2020. <laughs> Just Google it. You will find it. And all the podcast <laughs> events are there. And you can join me and interview some amazing guests. I even have um, international guests speaking. So it'll be oh, great. Oh, fantastic. Amazing. Well, great to get your insight as always into the job space. Thanks for your time this morning, Renata. I, I hope you enjoy the interview with Ticket TV folks. I hope you um, are able to attend one of the four episodes that we're filming live. And look, if you are not, that's fine too. We're going to edit them and release them between September and October here on our podcast. So you are going to, there's no FOMO, you are going to uh, listen to them eventually. And next week we do have a guest and her name is Sue Lim. She's an expert in workplace design. Sue Lim is somebody I met a couple of years ago. I hired her a few times to help me develop workplaces that were exciting and interesting for the teams that I was managing at the time. And she's very good at working with teams and architects and builders to develop great workplaces and of course I wanted to talk to her about workplaces of the future post-COVID, why would people be going back to the office, what types of work can we do very well from home and what types of work are better suited for office environments and she did not disappoint. So I hope to uh, excite you by um, bringing in Sue Lim next week to talk to us about uh, workplaces of the future. Bye for now and I'll see you next week. <laughs>